imagine is 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. At night, you're in your tent, you hear noises coming from outside. You leave your tent to come and see what's happening. You look around, you see people are leaving the camp of Aba Abdullah Looking around for a split second, your eyes fall into the eyes of Imam Hussain In that moment, you decide you're going to stay. The day of Ashura comes. You're now the 73rd companion of Aba Abdullah Imagine you walk up to the holy Imam and you offer yourself, your service to him and he gives you a choice. He says you can serve me wherever you like. Which part of Ashura would you want to be involved in? To be honest, it, it is a difficult question and <clears throat> the feelings are getting higher. If you imagine this image, as you talked about Ashura in Karbala with Abu Abdullah al Hussein. I will do everything what Abu Abdullah gives me. I tell him, Abu Abdullah, do you want me to clean your feet? I clean your feet. Do you want me to get water for you, for your children? No problem. Do you want me to fight? Or do you think it is better that I stay with the woman, with the children? It's up to you. But my dream or the dream of us Shia is to fight with Abu Abdullah, to fall with Abu Abdullah. Because in Ashura, when we, when we cry or when we make some rituals of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, like Latum or Tatbir or some, something like that, we always remind that I hope this pain or this blood fell in Karbala with Abu Abdullah. But it's up to Abu Abdullah. Maybe he tells me, I don't want you. But if you say Abu Abdullah asks me, what do you want to do? It's up to Abu Abdullah because he's, he's like a king and we are his slaves. And a slave can't take, a slave normally hasn't got his own his own uh, mind, his own idea. He just do what the king tells him to do. And Abu Abdullah is our Imam, is our king. That's all I can say about it. Now imagine you've had a long day at work. You come home, you open the door, you walk in, you see your family running around the house frantically. One person's bringing fruit, another person's making tea, another person's organizing food. And it occurs to you that you might have guests, you might have visitors who have come around to see your family. So in that commotion, you grab someone, you say, what's going on, who's come to see us? And one of your family mem members replies, they haven't come to see us, they've come to see you. So you say, who is this person who's come to see me? Maybe it's a friend from work, a friend from school, a friend from mosque. And they say, he's waiting for you in the living room. So you come to the living room, you open the door, you walk in, you see sitting on your chair is Imam Hussain Alayhi Salaam. Imam Hussain In that moment, difficult questions. I, 
What would you say to him? What would you want him to say to you? As you say, if we imagine the picture, if you come to your living room where normally you find your, your sister or your brother or your mother or your father, and then you come and see Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, salam alayhi. I think automatically you fall on his foot and you kiss his foot. It's a dream as well. It's a dream as well that you got Abu Abdullah in your house. As we, because I dream as well that, that when Sahib Zaman comes, oh, salam Allah alayhi, that he, that I can get him to our house to make food for him, to give him something to drink, to make massage for his food. I will tell Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Abu Abdullah, all what I belong, all what, all what I have got now, my money, my clothes, my family, my good manner, is, it's all from you, Abu Abdullah. And all what I have got now, my family, my sister, my brother, my mother, everyone my family, everyone of my friends, it's for you, Abu Abdullah. It belongs to you, Abu Abdullah. And I, again, as I answered uh, in the first question, I will also ask him, Abu Abdullah, what do you want? Tell me, if you want me to die, I'm going to die. If you want me to fight, I will fight. Because I can't Normally, if you've got a father or if you've got a manager at your work or a professor in your university, you always wait till he tells you something to do. Because, for example, the professor in the university, he normally tells you, you have to learn this for the exam. Or the manager at work, he tells you, you have to put this here, you have to put this there. So I can't imagine that I can say to Abu Abdullah, Abu Abdullah, I wanted to do this, to do this or I wanted to do this, because, or I don't want to do this. We have to. Because Abu Abdullah, he comes with a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all what he said in the Quran, or all what Ahl bayt said in the books, we can't come and say, no, I want to. I don't want to do it. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pray, to fast. I can't come and say, oh Allah, I don't want to pray. And Imam Hussein is just like this. You can't come to Imam Hussein and say to him, oh Imam, I don't want to do this, or should I do this? You wait what Abu Abdullah says, but I know Sometimes Abu Abdullah, his heart is the best heart ever. As we listen in the lectures or when we read in the books, in Karbala, Abu Abdullah, he came to Abu al Abbas السلام, and told him, I don't want you to do fight. I don't want that you, you, you go so, so you don't die. I don't want to lose you. He always said this to his son Ali Akbar السلام, or to his friends. Abu Abdullah has got a heart, not like the most of the people today. When you go now to an army, the general, he doesn't care if you die or you don't die. You are a soldier and you have to fight. If you die, okay, then he will maybe be said. Or if you stay fighting, it's good as well. But sometimes I think we have to decide for the way which is not so simple. Because Amir al-Mumini he said that our way is not a simple way. 
and Ahl al-Bayt want to make it simple for us. But we always have to take the way which is more difficult. And Abu Abdullah tells me, I don't want you to fight. I have to say to him, Abu Abdullah, please, I want to fight because I know you will fight as well. And I can't stay if you in one or two hours will be killed. That's it. So imagine you've had a talk with him for one hour, two hours. Now he gets up to say his farewell and leave your house. Just as he's leaving the door, he turns around and he looks at you and he says, I've accepted you as a servant. How would you feel hearing that from him? For him to say he's happy with you, with your actions, with your manners, that he's taking you under his family, under his servantship. To be honest, I will be proud if Imam Hussein talks to me. What if he tells me something like that? I think I will, I will fly because I will be so happy, because I will be so proud. Because we Shia are today, most of the people are against us. The Wahhabis, there are much people who are against us. And in this moment when Abu Abdullah tells me, you are good, you now belong to me, that's the same dream which every one of us Shia dreams now when Sahib al-Zaman comes out and he chooses you as a soldier because the soldiers of Ahl al-Bayt are be chosen. You can't go and say, can I be a soldier? You can do it as well, like Hurr al of one Allah Ta'ala alayhi. He was first an enemy of Abu Abdullah and, and, and as he came to Karbala, he saw Abu Abdullah he went to Abu Abdullah with his son and his slave, told him, Abu Abdullah, can we fight with you? But to be honest, Hurr al was chosen as well from Allah before. We know the friends of Abu Abdullah, the soldiers, the people who fight with Ahl al-Bayt, they are being chosen. And I don't know what, how, how I will react on this, what Abu Abdullah says to me. Because I will think, okay, I'm not just chosen from Abu Abdullah, from Allah. So it was a secret which I didn't know the whole time. I always tried to make the best. And finally, I had this from Abu Abdullah. I think my reaction, will, <laughs> I don't know if I will laugh or if I will cry or if I will shout loud. I don't know. But if Abu Abdullah tells me, okay, you are now one of me, then I don't need anything more. I don't need my work, don't need my money, no, don't need my family as well. Because I've got you know, Imam I don't even need this world. Yeah. At the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago. I asked you about a day that most of us have at least a little bit of information on. Obviously no one knows the depth of the tragedy, but we know who was killed, where they were killed, how they were killed. Now knowing what we know of that day, it might be easy to say, for example, if I was there with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas 
I, I would have at least given him five more minutes with Imam Hussein when he shouted, Ya Akhi. Yeah. For example, if I was there with the tents of the women and children, maybe I could have stalled it five more minutes from them burning the tents down or hitting the children. And at the beginning I said to you, imagine you walk up to the Imam and the Imam gives you the choice. He lets you decide. Now in this day and age, a lot of people often forget that we have a 12th Imam who's also with us. May Allah hasten his reappearance. And in a way, him being physically absent from us is giving us a choice in how we want to serve him. Because he's not here to say, for example, go and pick this up for me, go and do this for me, go and bring this person here. He's absent from us, so we have to use our own logic, our own understanding to do what we can for him. Now my final question, I guess, is what do you think you've done for the 12th Imam? How do you think he feels about you? What do you think he expects from us today? I don't think Sahib Zaman will accept me because what I do for Sahib Zaman is just like nothing. Just if I think now about, okay, a day has got 24 hours. How many hours do I think about Sahib Zaman? I, I think it will not be an hour. It will not be an hour at the day. And to say, okay, Sahib Zaman, I will fight with you. As you said, if we imagine now it's just a dream, but if we come to the reality and you really have to leave everything and go with an Imam, if you've got a woman who you love, or children, or family, or a friend. It will be difficult, but I think it will be not difficult if your heart is filled up with love to Sahib Zaman, or generally to Ahlul Bayt Sometimes if we think about what we do in our life, I don't think Sahib Zaman say, okay, I'm proud of you. Your person is really good. Because we, I don't know if, Everyone is like that, but normally when I look at myself or at my friends, I see we just make us ready for Ashura, just make us ready for Shah Ramadan. But we always forget we have to make us ready for the thing which is most important, and it is Sahab al Zaman. It's just it's always in the back of our mind that there will a day comes and we have to stay and we have to forget everything and leave everything and stay with Sahib Zaman. So I don't know what to answer about that. Yeah. If someone wanted to become closer to Sahib Zaman salam. What would you recommend for them to do? The first thing, <clears throat> your manner to your family um, and to your parents have to be good because when we look now to the youth they don't have much respect to their parents. 
That's the first thing. Because Ahlul Bayt say, with Allah, with Al-Walidain, if your parents are happy about you, then Allah is also happy about you. Second thing, that you always have to pray and not two, three hours later. The third thing is that you fill up your heart with Ahlul Bayt, not with women or money or cars or anything of this world. You have to follow you up your heart with Ahlul Bayt. So you have to read books, a hadith of Ahlul Bayt. You can read a hadith, what will be happen when Sahib Zaman comes out. What he will do first and where will he go first. That's the most important thing that you always go to the hadith, go to the people who has got many informations about these subjects. And there are some things which are very simple, but we always leave it. Like Dua Al-Ahad, which we can read every morning. Imam Sadiq told us, if you read Dua Al-Ahad 40 days, you will be, inshallah, be a soldier of Sahib Zaman. Or Dua al nudb every Friday. Or Sahib Zaman told us as well, if you want me to come, so fast as possible, then read Dua Al-Faraj. And Dua Al-Faraj is also a Dua which is very important. But here, we have to stay at this point. I can't de read Dua Al-Faraj thousand times a day. But how do I read it? Am I busy with z this world and my heart? is not filled up with love to Sahib Zaman and I read Dua al Faraj. It's just like if you, for example, sing, sing, uh, sing something and do another thing at the same time. Dua al Ahad, if you read it, it has to be, it has to come from your heart, from the inside of you. There are many points. <clears throat> but now these points uh, are just in my mind now. <laughs> Oh